Hello and welcome to my channel. Remember this? <laughs> Most of you will not, because I suspect more will see this video than saw what I am now showing you. But it was a fictional trailer made just when we got more information on what is now Strike Fighters 2 North Atlantic. Back then, it was called Strike Fighters 2 Tomcat, and that and Iceland was about all we knew about it. So, here I am, about one and a half year after I made this, to tell you more. It would be quite unfair to you who have not yet enjoyed the game to be denied a similar sequence that I just showed you in Strike Fighters 2 North Atlantic, so here you go. Radar contact. Designate Raid 1, bearing 349er, range 460 miles. Numerous contacts, count 140 contacts, course 175, speed 600 knots. Alright, maybe it's better if I do not play the game footage in the background. I do want your attention. And for a Strike Fighters 2 title, this looks good to say the least. It's the first thing you will notice with the game, and you probably already have, considering the impressive amount of screenshots released. Especially the water have been improved, and it would be strange otherwise considering the title of the game. I don't know about you, but I would find it a hard time getting immersive to engage the Soviet Blue Water Navy in a water that is anything but. It is also clear that TK has been going out of his way to make sure the task force are detailed properly. All the ships, Soviet and American, looks frankly awesome, and it's a sheer pleasure to do flybys to annoy the skipper. Um, depending on what ship you are doing the flyby of, the skipper may be offended enough to open fire. The terrain also looks better, but it's not a huge improvement. It's a new terrain engine, and I wonder what we will see from this engine in the future. The small settlements placed on the very barren Iceland looks a lot better than the stock cities of the previous series, but not by much. The airplanes are up to their usual semi-gorgeous standards. It is not more nor less than I would expect from Third Wire, and they perform their task well. What is however very interesting with the game are the new features in scripting. There are more AI-only roles, such as jamming aircraft, naval recon and cruise missile attacks, as well as AWACS support from E2 Hawkeyes that comes with a very uninspired operator. Hawkeye, home plate, left, 9 o'clock, 50 miles. Naval battles now have full support, and it also seems like amphibious landings are available as well. We also seem to have a more educated AI that will do their utmost to kill you, and I've been shot down by MiG-23s more time than I care to admit. There is also the added bonus that both the mission editor and campaign customizer are fully supported by the game from day one. I spent some time in a French Crusader based at Keflavik to try it out, and it certainly opened up new possibilities to how one can enjoy this game. So, what is new to the Strike Fighters 2 series as a whole? That is hard to say at the moment, since much of what Strike Fighters 2 is is made up by the modding community. And we do not know what additional options are available to us, or if they will be patched in to the older games in the future. I personally feel that the latter is important, especially the new AI-only roles, and it would help to improve the lifespan and enjoyment of the older titles, especially if we could find a use for Israel, Europe and Demar. So, the game is nice, improved and polished, but is it fun to play? 
Short answer, hell yes. Long answer. The Strike Fighters 2 series has always been fun. If you enjoyed the previous games, then you will enjoy this one as well, especially considering it's a huge improvement to the series. The new tasks, updated graphics and challenging settings is a blast, especially trying to engage bomber formations or enemy task forces. As a standalone title, Strike Fighters 2 North Atlantic is superb, breathing new life into the series and showing off why it has a cult following to begin with. With this as a start, it will truly be interesting to see what the modding community will try and top it all with. As far as I'm concerned, this was well worth the wait and I seriously can't wait to get back to playing it. Mass Effect 3, well, it'll have to wait.